Welcome viewers and listeners to CHP Talks. We're here again with another special edition and uh, we've got two guests with me today. Uh, on, on my screen, I see uh, Barry Neufeld, uh, who has been on our show before, a uh, Chilliwack School trustee, and also Paul Jaffe is Barry's lawyer. And welcome to both of you to the show. Thank you. And uh, I will review some of the details that you may not all know about Barry Neufeld. Well, we're not going to give you all the details. It would take the whole show. But anyway, uh, he has been a Chilliwack school trustee for 26 years. Uh, he, his former career, he was in retail merchandising and um, uh, investment sales for six years, retail merchandising for six years. He was a correctional officer uh, with uh, probation and family court, um, family court mediator, BC Ministry of Solicitor General for 16 years. How old are you anyway, Barry? So uh, he's been a youth probation officer, the BC Ministry of Children and Families for six years and restorative justice facilitator, BC Ministry of Children and Family Development for six years. He also has been a board rep for the Provincial Council of BC School Trustees and um, he has a bachelor's in adolescent psychology from Simon Fraser, 1978. Paul Jaffe, Barry's lawyer, uh, graduated from Carleton University, uh, his bachelor's in political science, 1979. From 79 to 81, he was a parliamentary assistant in the House of Commons. And that was throughout the debates about the repatriation of the Constitution. Very interesting in these days, as that uh, question has come up with uh, the Honorable Brian Peckford, <clears throat> uh, talking about that process. From 1981 to 1984, he was at the University of Ottawa. Uh, he articled with Davis and Company in Vancouver, called to the BC Bar in 1985. Uh, in 1986 and 80 to 88, he was Crown Counsel with AGBC. Uh, what is the AG? Attorney General of British Columbia, I guess. There you go. Prosecuting criminal cases in the Vancouver courts. In 1988, he opened a solo practice, uh, practicing primarily criminal law and commercial litigation throughout the 1990s. Over the last two decades, he's had an increasing focus on cases which raise constitutional issues such as freedom of speech and other rights enshrined in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Those are things very dear to our hearts. And he has appeared as counsel on all levels of court, including the Supreme Court of Canada and before numerous administrative tribunals. And I noticed in the article, uh, Paul, that among other footnotes, uh, you were once drafted to play for the BC Lions. Uh, I think that probably was too easy of a job for you. So you decided instead to <clears throat> take on the challenges of seeking justice within Canada's political and judicial system. So thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. So the case that you are bringing to the Supreme Court in October, um, maybe... Uh, Paul, maybe you could just uh, launch us out with a little explanation there. I know Barry, it's not a, his first uh, rodeo. He's uh, been in these battles already as a school trustee, being attacked mercilessly by uh, some of those in positions of power. Uh, but anyway, maybe you can describe how the case uh, came to go to the Supreme Court. Sure. Uh, back in the fall of 2017, uh, Barry, as an elected school board trustee, uh, raised concerns publicly about this program called SOGI, the Sexual Orientation Gender Identification Program, which was being uh, promoted uh, through the schools, K-12, to and which raised concerns amongst many parents who, who uh, among other things, elected their school board trustees to be their voice. So Barry was, as far as I can tell, the first uh, elected school board trustee anywhere in Canada to raise concerns about the propriety of uh, imposing a, a gender ideology uh, in the public schools. It's a, uh, regardless of your views as to the merits of the program, it's, it's clearly uh, potentially impactful and, and uh, uh, a matter which warrants public scrutiny and public debate. Um, so uh, Barry raised the concern. Uh, he predicted at the time that he would be uh, vilified to some degree. He would be portrayed as being 
uh, transphobic and hateful and bigoted and the usual kinds of slurs that are used to uh, damage critics and shut down debate. And Barry's prediction was entirely true. Within a, a day or so, there was the flurry of media uh, uh, widely published in numerous uh, outlets, uh, essentially targeting Barry with those kinds of imputations. Uh, Barry then immediately uh, issued a uh, uh, an apology and a clarification of what it was that he was concerned about, which was essentially focused on this idea that um, it ought not to be the purpose of schools and the job of teachers to promote this concept called gender fluidity, which is this idea that uh, there are more than two genders and it invites children to uh, participate in this process of identifying where they are on the gender spectrum all of which in the minds of many people is quite inappropriate to be imposing on young kids uh, who if left alone will develop uh, their natural path in life. Uh, so um, in any event, Barry sounded the alarm about this. Um, his efforts to explain how he's not hateful or bigoted or transphobic or any of those vile defects were, fell on deaf ears. Well, I wouldn't say they fell on deaf ears. I think what happened was the proponents of Soji saw this as an opportunity to make sure that this thing doesn't get debated and, and never does become the subject of uh, public scrutiny. And so uh, over the course of the next year, um, various uh, uh, activists, uh, and, and persons in positions of power um, uh, exploited their um, positions to target Barry in ways that uh, were, were defamatory and uh, uh, seriously uh, damaging Barry's reputation in the community in some ways. Uh, and uh, I mean, I'll address that later more fully, but uh, imputing hatred, hate speech, um, religious bigotry, um, racism, anti-Semitism, the list was, was substantial and, and, and the scope of imputations was quite broad, uh, published in um, all of the print media throughout the internet. Um, so it got to the point where, oh, and the public ser uh, sector unions, as part of this, uh, what we call the smear campaign, instigated uh, complaints at the Human Rights Commission here in BC against Barry, um, the complaints themselves uh, have absolutely no merit, but the instigation of the proceedings were used as, a, as a, a pretext by which to renew the smear campaign because it attracted a lot of publicity. Uh, for almost, well, four and a half years after those proceedings started, they still technically exist, but neither the uh, QP or the BCTF who started those complaints has found one single union member willing to come forward to say that they were uh, damaged by Barry's public statements. So it's it's an absolutely bizarre uh, process to watch the uh, Human Rights Commission, uh, which in my view is an oxymoron, it's a contradiction in terms, targeting Barry for having expressed his views on this matter. But in any event, after about a year of, of being vilified in the media and uh, a month or so before the uh, um, school board trustee elections of 2018, uh, Barry decided to fight back um, and uh, issued a demand to one of the uh, principal culprits in the smear campaign, who was at the time the president of the BCTF, the teachers union here in BC. His name is uh, uh, Glenn Hansman. And uh, uh, demanding an apology and a retraction from Glenn, the, uh, the fact that uh, uh, Glenn had, had been uh, extremely hostile and, and repeatedly in the media targeting Barry. Uh, the demand was refused and Mr. Hansman uh, indicated uh, to the world that he stood by his comments. And then he continued even after the demand was issued to defame Barry in the media. So we started a defamation case for Barry um, now, nor, uh, normally, uh, uh, 
what happens in a defamation case is you 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 send out the claim, then you get a defense, and there's a usual litigation process unfolds. There's documents, there's discoveries, and you set a trial date, and off you go, and you have your trial. But in the uh, spring of 2019, um, the government um, in BC passed some legislation called the Protection of Public Participation Act. And the acronym for that is SLAP, Strategic Lawsuit Against Public Participation. And what it means is somebody who's being sued in relation to statements of a, uh, on a public matter can go to court to say that their free speech is being infringed. And it's a legislation designed to prevent people from being dragged through litigation by powerful parties who are able to use the courts as a way to silence debate. So the irony of this whole thing is that you have the president of a 45,000 member union using the slap action against Barry uh, to prevent Barry from having a day in court on his defamation case. Uh, long story short, and I know I'm probably going longer than you wanted with this That's overview. Um, overview. Well, the, um, uh, the initial judge who heard uh, Mr. Hansman's slap application did actually dismiss the case, saying that, that Barry, uh, Barry's claim against Glenn Hansman constituted a threat to Hansman's freedom of expression, and that Barry's case was dismissed. Um, we thought this was absolutely absurd. Um, it turns the whole scheme of the slap legislation on its head when it's used to prevent Barry from, um, from his day in court. Give, given the background here, the whole background here is that Barry was exercising his freedom of expression when he raised concerns about Soji. Right. And all of a sudden, Hansman, who used the media for a full year to shut down Barry and then used the Human Rights Commission as a sort of a bludgeoning tool to punish him for speaking out, is now resorting to the legislation that's designed to protect Barry in order to shut down Barry. So the whole thing was truly bizarre, turned the whole scheme on its head. We went to the Court of Appeal. Um, we had the, the Court of Appeal set aside the judgment and, and reinstate Barry's claim. Um, and then uh, Glenn Hansman applied for leave to appeal at the Supreme Court of Canada from the BC Court of Appeal and was granted leave, which means we're now having the appeal heard in Ottawa. The hearing date is now set for October 12th of this year. Uh, um, and um, it's a bit troubling uh, to me uh, as a lawyer of almost 37 years now to see a case like this get leave because on the merits as a libel case, trying to be objective here, I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, well, it's beyond meritorious. It's an extremely strong claim. Uh, it, it ought to get its day in court. Um, what is troubling is that because of the underlying debate, which is Soji, yeah. and, and the propriety of imposing this gender ideology on school kids, um, you know, the Supreme Court of Canada has not told us why they granted leave. They never do. They either grant leave or they don't. But but it's unsettling to think that they would take such a meritorious case and bring it to Ottawa. Uh, it suggests to me that they're gonna be addressing um, the underlying debate, which is the gender ideology in the schools. And this is horrifying because that ought to be completely uh, irrelevant to the yeah. question of whether someone gets their day in court on a libel claim. Yeah, sure, and, that's and, an and issue equal. that, yeah. Well, I, equally troubling, I'll, I'll say, is, is, that, is that the Supreme Court of Canada has invited uh, a number of um, parties to intervene, uh, to participate in the appeal. And, and these are special interest groups that are uh, promoting, um, uh, you know, the LGBTQ groups of various kind, publicly funded across the country, are all uh, coming to Ottawa to participate in a case which, in which if the rule of law was governing and the principles of defamation law were governing, uh, that background debate would be immaterial. But here you have Ottawa inviting all of these groups to come down and basically gang up against Barry. So you've got the Attorney General of BC, you've got a BC Government Employees Union, you've got the BCTF, you've got 
a number of special interest groups, transgender activists and things, all publicly funded, ganging up on, on poor little Barry, who just wants his day in court. And, and I understand that uh, one uh, group, the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms, that applied for intervener status on Barry's behalf was denied that status. So, you know, I mean, I don't yeah. understand that kind of imbalance at all. Um, well, yeah, you, you're right, Rod. It's 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 troubling on the face of it. Um, as the eternal optimist, I like to think it's maybe because they want to give the other side the best shot they can they can give, so that they yeah. they no one can complain later. That that's looking at it optimistically. A cynic might think that this kind of uh, is laying out the tea leaves for us as to where they're headed. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, with respect to the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms, the, their position was this is very much a, a question of free speech. It, it's a question of free speech uh, and, because defamation law protects the public arena. People who participate in public debate have recourse to the courts if they're subject to um, uh, efforts to shut them down and to punish them for having spoken out. So defamation law in a sense protects free speech. The other reason the Justice Center wanted to jump in is because democracy is at stake here as well. When the parents of a community whose kids are in these schools want to have input on what's going on, they elect school board trustees to reflect their views. So by allowing the public sector unions and governments to come in and essentially demolish a trustee and destroy a trustee for, for representing his constituents is, a, is an assault on democracy. Yeah. So there are these two very powerful themes uh, on a constitutional front that, in my view, are entirely relevant to what's going on. So the, the interveners who are promoting, uh, the special interest groups, the interveners who are promoting gender ideology in the schools are all getting invited by the Supreme Court of Canada to participate. The party that has raised legitimate constitutional issues here hasn't been given that opportunity. So it's just, like I say, it's just Barry against the world here. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, it's actually remarkable uh, to watch. But like I say, being the eternal optimist, <laughs> yeah. I like to think they're going to give us a good listen. So, All right. Well, uh, Paul, thanks for that great uh, overview of, of the situation. Uh, Barry, I, I want to sort of go back with you. You've been elected and reelected uh, as a school board trustee for Chilliwack over a period, at, uh, at least of 20, well, 26 years you served and uh, You've said you've sort of been uh, working with them for about 30 years. Uh, obviously, the people that elect you <clears throat> believe that you have some uh, contribution to make to the governance of uh, <clears throat> the schools where they are entrusting their children to receive an education. And going, we didn't uh, go into all your background, but you've been involved in working with uh, troubled youth in different ways. <clears throat> and now, I guess uh, one point, if you could address this, uh, uh, because of these attacks by uh, Glenn Hansman and other uh, groups against your character, uh, you right now are not able to even be in the schools for which you are a, uh, an elected school trustee. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yes, I've been humiliated, uh, not allowed to set foot in schools. But uh, something interesting happened during grad week. Um, we have three large high schools, so they each have two ceremonies. One ceremony is to hand out scholarships and awards. The other ceremony is the cap and gown grad. So the first school met in a church in Chilliwack, quite a large church. So I got dressed up in my finery and off I went and they recognized me at the door and showed me to the the lounge where all the uh, scholarship donors, trustees, and politicians were. And the chairman of the school board came up to me and said, Barry, I'm surprised that you're here. I said, why is that? He says, well, you're not allowed to be around students. And I said, well, I was elected to represent my community and uh, I had more votes than you, so I'm staying. He says, no, you have to go. I said, call the cops. So he got all upset and said, I'm trying to be a gentleman and you're being unreasonable. So he ran off to uh, uh, his vice chair and she was having a hissy fit. Then the superintendent tried to persuade me to leave and then the principal came over and tried to make me leave. So I said, okay, I'll make a compromise. I won't march in with all the dignitaries. I'll sneak into the back row and just sit in the back row. So they didn't say anything about that. 
Well, the church is designed like an amphitheater and all the back seats were full. So I ended up on the third row from the front, right in front of the trustees. The next night, I didn't dress up. I just wore a jean jacket and different hat. And when I got into the, it was the same church. It was a different high school. I snuck past the greeters and went way up in the nosebleed section behind all everybody else. I was sitting there and my fellow trustee, Heather Maas, texted me. She says, Barry, are you here? I said, yeah. She says, come join us. Uh, the superintendent said that it's wrong to exclude you from an event like this. So I got up from the back seat at the back of the hall and I went and joined my trustees and proudly marched in uh, behind the Aboriginal drummers and sat in the seat of honor. <laughs> of course, there was no public announcement that Barry Newfelt was in the room, but it was a small victory. And of course, this humiliation of not being allowed to go into schools is entirely due to Glenn Hansman. I'm not gonna let him get away with it. Yeah. I uh, read somewhere that you said, uh, this is a hill you're willing to die on. So, uh, I, well, that's I mean, what I, you know, that's what I told don't her. die in the process, but we, we are glad that you have the kind of, uh, 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 stick to itiveness, I guess, that you are going to see this through to a logical conclusion. Hopefully it is a logical conclusion and a just conclusion, uh, when you get to the Supreme court of Canada. There's so much illogic. You know, that church where they were having the grad ceremonies is firmly against the LGBTQ narrative. And they were trying to kick me out of that church. That's why I said, call the cops. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I had the privilege. I don't remember the date, but I did attend one of those school board uh, meetings um, kind of early in some of this kerfuffle that was going on. There were protests. January. Going. January 16th, 2018. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> now I can put that in my diary. <laughs> but anyway, there was quite a bit of uh, uh, commotion going on outside. And that is, as uh, Paul, as you pointed out, the underlying issue has to do with how we handle sexuality and, and uh, gender questions and so on. But that is not the issue of this case. This issue has strictly to do with uh, the defamation of a citizen of Canada, a school trustee, an elected school trustee, and someone against whom there are no claims of uh, wrongdoing other than that he's not going along with the agenda uh, being promoted by the radical left. And uh, it's, it's just uh, appalling that that could flavor uh, you know, the underlying uh, question could flavor this. That question itself deserves to be debated um, and it deserves to be debated on all kinds of levels, local school boards, uh, you know, in provincial politics and uh, in the media, but uh, it should not be the factor influencing whether uh, it's okay to mistreat, abuse, and defame a citizen of Canada. Mm -hmm. I mean, it boils down to this, Rod. Um, we either have the rule of law in this country or we don't. The law of defamation either applies uh, universally to those who are defamed or as uh, being advocated by Hansman and others now, it ought to be applied selectively depending on what sort of underlying debate took place before the uh, defamatory publications occurred, um, the idea that we would look beneath the publications themselves and the falsity and the damage done to, to the views of the person who was targeted with that misconduct on whether that person gets a day in court, it's absolutely abhorrent to the rule of law, which has, has been the defining feature of this supposedly free and democratic society for a hundred years, uh, we can't depart from that. That, to me, is the is the is the uh, is the hill to die for uh, yeah. on or whatever the phrase is. Barry, you've got yours, I've got mine, but <laughs> together we're 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 on the same hill here. Yeah. Uh, to me, as a as a, a constitutional enthusiast, uh, I, I was weaned on the charter. I I. I, I was in Ottawa throughout the uh, whole patriation process. I witnessed the uh, 
constitutional reference case in I wish I witnessed the parliamentary filibusters during the time that Trudeau senior the, the, the Trudeau who could actually read um, he, he was um, he was um, filibustered in the House of Commons because his constitutional package didn't have sufficient provincial consent so I mean I, I that was my early history and then going to law school the charter was a brand new thing it was just being enacted at the time and then as a young crown counsel in the 80s, we were flying by the seat of our pants, uh, uh, arguing constitutional issues. And then for the last 37 years, the constitution has been a big part of my practice to the law. So when I see how terribly damaged the justice system has become yeah. to even think that a guy like Barry Newfeld can't get a day in court, uh, I'm I'm horrified, honestly. I, I I think this bodes terribly for the future of the country, if 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 one's views on something will determine whether they get a day in court on a meritorious libel claim. This to me is horrifying. Yeah, well, it's a uh, it's a part of the cancel culture, and unfortunately, we I mean we would like to think that the courts are beyond you know, uh, where society has uh, dribbled the ball into the corner there. And with the cancel culture, if, if we don't like somebody, we just uh, uh, pretend that they are not worth listening to. We reject them from roles they would otherwise be. And I mean, this, this uh, you know, pushing Barry out of the schools that he was elected to help govern is, to me, it's just amazing that that could uh, prevail there's and with no uh, instance of any abuse of of that privilege of being in the schools um but we've seen over the past six months uh some of the abuses of the charter of rights and freedoms take place in the country on different issues and uh i think it, i think back to um i heard some years ago that under stalin the Soviet constitution was a fairly good constitution. It just was poorly implemented. Uh, fail, you know, they failed to enforce its provisions. So it's it's great to have good documents, good laws, a good constitution. But if the people uh, either elected or bureaucrats or judges appointed to sit on the bench uh, who uh, have the authority to you know enforce or or defend those rights, uh, if if they don't do it. Uh, then that piece of paper isn't worth very much, right? So. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 the whole, the whole um, theory behind the rule of law is that the, the justice system can't be political. Yeah, can't be political. We can we, we can watch the uh, the um, impact of various ideologies on other institutions, whether it's the universities or the public schools governments generally, the um, public sector unions, uh, uh, but the courts have to be protected from this. They, they can't go that way. Yeah. And, and, um, and what I've submitted in, in our arguments in Ottawa is, is that this will be a test of whether the courts themselves have fallen to those same pressures, right. whether the uh, <clears throat> function of the courts, the paramount function of the court is to protect the is to enforce the rules of the constitution. Right. It can only do that if it refrains from being political. Right. And the um, initial judgment which dismissed Barry's case was entirely political uh, in various ways. It was just uh, astounding. Um, the Court of Appeal corrected that. Uh, when Ottawa decided to hear this case, it was very troubling. Like I say, they don't tell us why they decided to hear the case. But when we see who they've invited to participate, it, it becomes increasingly uh, of concern that yeah. they, they may now be deciding that people who speak out against things like gender ideology in the schools are not entitled to a day in court. Yeah. And this, this to me is a... Uh, very uh, ominous uh, message if it if it uh, unfolds as feared it might um so we're there to uh, essentially protect free speech because uh when people like barry are precluded from speaking out uh we're in a lot of trouble honestly uh, as a society 
Absolutely. So, uh, Barry, uh, I just appreciate so much that you've been willing to be uh, the tip of the spear here, uh, repeatedly hammered um, um, by <clears throat> those who have the, author you know, the, not the authority, but the power to do so. And of course, uh, with a media that is generally hostile to uh, the views that you are expressing, uh, views, by the way, that we share. And uh, so um, I, I guess I wanted to sort of ask you on a personal level, you, you've already paid a huge price. Now you're going to sort of into the lion's den there in a very public uh, position. Um, what, what do you, how do you think about these issues? Uh, does this occupy your mind all day long or are you able to uh, put this off uh, sort of in a way until October 12th? Well, I must say I do have an interesting life. Uh, I have things come up that keep me distracted. And the one thing I have tried to avoid doing is using any religious arguments to explain why I've taken my position. But it does weigh heavily on me, but I would say that my faith is what gives me the strength to keep going. And stories like David and Goliath, I feel like little David was just a slingshot, but hopefully uh, my slingshot, uh, Paul Jaffe, will uh, make sure the stone goes right between the, the enemy's eyes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, um, uh, the timing is interesting. Um, I have to be in Ottawa October the 12th. Uh, it may last as long as October the 13th, but then I have to get back to Chilliwack because there's a municipal election and I'm running for school trustee again. I am a sucker for punishment, but I decided <laughs> that I can't quit at this point. Um, so I got to hang in there. Yeah. I'll be as old and foggy as Joe Biden, but I'll still be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you obviously, because of your commitment over the years to young people, to education and uh, mental health and, and uh, recovery, you, you've worked with young people coming out of, uh, you know, correction, correctional institutes and so on. I mean, you've got a, a fantastic commitment to the health of our upcoming generation. And uh, I hope hope that they will uh, release the jaws of the dogs that they have uh, unleashed on you and that they will uh, allow you to, to spend uh, the, up, the years ahead of you uh, doing the things you love to do to help society and not uh, having to you know, fight off the attackers. Uh, if people want to help, uh, obviously any court case, especially one going to the Supreme Court, there's gonna be uh, huge costs involved. Uh, if people want to help you, they want to contact you, uh, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, I'm, I'm sharing a screen right now. Can you all see that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, um, I have a new email. It's trustee spelt with a Y, new fellow Gmail. And uh, the Give, Send, Go, you can just look up Give, Send, Go, Barry Newfeld, but the actual letters are G352B. And uh, I'd appreciate any, uh, any support people can give. Wonderful. Appreciate that. And uh, I don't know yet what my fall plans are, travel plans, but if I'm anywhere near Ottawa uh, on October 12th, I hope to be in the courtroom and uh, supporting you in that way. We certainly will spread this word around and uh, I know that our people, regardless of their opinion on the so-called underlying issues that uh, we, we trust that Canadians care enough about free speech and about uh, the rights of citizens to express themselves that they will uh, rally to this very just cause. And uh, thank you both uh, for, for carrying this ball for all of us. Uh, any, any final words that you'd like to say before we close off this uh, set edition. No other than thank you, Rod, for uh, taking an interest and in sharing this with as many others as you can to essentially alert people that this is all happening and and is, uh, in my view, very serious uh, has serious implications if it's not taken in the right direction. Well, yeah. 
I count it a real privilege to have uh, both of you with us today. Barry Newfelt, Chilliwack School Trustee, and Paul Jaffe, lawyer, on their way, mounted on their trusty steeds, on their way to the Supreme Court uh, to defend freedom of speech for all Canadians. So thank you very much. And God bless thank you. Thank you very much. For thank thank you very much, Rod. Viewers, we'll uh, see you again next week for another edition of CHP Talks. Thank you. Thank you.